Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to run through an example of how to do a chi-square analysis using M&Ms because I find that the first time that people start to learn about statistical analyses it can be a bit uh, complicated and difficult to understand and somehow when we use food products it's a little easier to understand what's going on instead. So uh, we'll work through this example with M&Ms and then hopefully you can take these ideas and apply them to other situations as well. So what I have here is a couple of bags of uh, peanut M&Ms, which I happen to find pretty delicious. And you know, if you open up a bag of M&Ms, you notice that there are different colors of M&Ms inside. And actually, uh, uh, see who are these made, made by? The Mars Company uh, guarantees that when you open up one of these bags of M&Ms, you are not going to get 100% uh, you know, orange or yellow M&Ms. You're going to get a mixture of colors. And they actually have a factory standard for the mixture of colors that you expect to get for those M&Ms. And so I have them on a little post-it note here. I'll just write them out in uh, larger lettering over here. So the expectation is that 23% of the M&Ms you get are blue, 23% are orange, 15% are green, 15% are yellow, 12% are red, and 12% are brown. So if I open up these bags of M&Ms and I count how many M&Ms are in here, um, let's see what I get. Well, I lost one on the floor, so I'm going to leave that one out for the time being. Okay, so here is what I actually get, aside from one yellow M&M that, that fell on the floor. Um, so we'll, we'll just imagine that extra yellow M&M is there. Right, so I'm supposed to have 23% blue, 23% orange, 15% green, 15% yellow, 12% red, and 12% brown. But I think just from looking at these M&Ms, uh, you can see that, you know, for example, I'm expecting it to get the same amount of red and brown, but here I have eight red M&Ms and four brown M&Ms. So that doesn't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. And then I have more blue M&Ms than I do orange M&Ms. And um, these are supposed to be similar to each other. And I have about the same amount of green M&Ms as orange M&Ms. I'm supposed to have more orange M&Ms. So I'm kind of left with a question of, you know, is this a reasonable distribution of M&M colors based on the expectations um, that Mars has given me for what I should see in a bag of M&Ms? So uh, to answer that question, we're going to use the chi-squared statistic um, because that's a way of helping us uh, evaluate whether you know this is you know what we could naturally expect, you know, just based on some variation in processing. So it's a it's an approximation. It's not we aren't exact, going to get exactly those M&Ms every time, or whether something weird is going on and you know maybe there's a machine that's malfunctioning and it's giving me extra red M&Ms instead of the brown M&Ms that I should be getting. So uh, for figuring this out, the first thing we need to do is we need to add up the total number of M&Ms of each color that we have actually observed. Okay, so I'm just going to add them up now.
All right, so now that I've added all of those up, um, that for this statistic, this statistic works with counts. So I need to put everything in terms of numbers rather than percentages. So I've got my observed number here. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm to, going to calculate the total number of M&Ms that are here. Okay, so I have a total of 72 M&Ms. And so then the next thing I'm going to do is I need to use these percentages to calculate the expected number of M&Ms that I should get. So I'm going to multiply this total by the percentage for each color. All right, so here I have my expected number of M&Ms of each type. So, you know, I saw 18, but only expected somewhere between 16 and 17 blue. Um, you know, 15 versus 16, 15 versus 10, uh, 12 versus 10 or 11. And then here I did expect to have closer to eight brown M&Ms rather than just four. So the way the chi-squared statistic is structured, the overall statistic is calculated as the sum of the observed number of items in each category, so like the observed number of blue, minus the expected number, quantity squared, divided by the expected number. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to calculate this value for each of these columns. So for the first one, that's going to be 18 minus 16.6 .6 squared divided by 16.6. So that's a number that is equal to 0.12. Okay. And then the same for the remaining columns here. Okay, so my next step is now going to be to add all of these numbers together. And I get a total of 4.53. So then for figuring out what this number means, the other piece of information that I need is my number of categories minus one. And uh, by convention, statisticians uh, indicate this as n minus one. And they refer to this measurement as the degrees of freedom. And we don't need to get too bogged down in why they call that the degrees of freedom right now. But it's n minus one, or the number of categories minus one, so here we've got one, two, three, four, five, six categories. So our degrees of freedom are five. Okay, so once we have our chi-squared statistic calculated and we have our degrees of freedom, we can then um, compare this 
to a critical chi-squared value that uh, is the value that tells us the probability of getting this outcome by chance. So let's look that up in a chi-squared statistic table. So here is a chi-squared distribution table that's in your textbook. So this is in Appendix D, page D3, if you want to look it up. So as a reminder, so our calculated chi-squared value was 4.53. And in this case, our degrees of freedom was 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to look in this table in the row for degrees of freedom of 5. And we're going to see where our calculated chi-squared value is. So if you look across here, so our calculated value 4.53. So that value is somewhere in between 4.3 and 6.06. .06. And so what that tells us is here the probability of getting that outcome is somewhere between zero point five and zero point three. So another way of thinking about that is that on um, there is a thirty to fifty percent chance of this outcome based on chance events alone. So in other words, uh, there is no problem with this distribution of uh, M&M colors. So even though my actual colors aren't exactly the same as you know what I would expect based on what the Mars companies reported for the frequency of these colors in a bag of M&Ms. Um, in fact, there's a fairly strong chance that this could have happened just based on chance events alone. So the thing you want to watch out for is um, if your probability is less than 0.05, so that's less than 5%, so if the chance of this outcome based on chance alone is less than 5%, that's a really small percentage. So in that case, um, you would then conclude that there's a small chance of that outcome based on chance events alone. And so something else uh, must be going on to explain the difference between what you observed and what you would expect to get. So under those circumstances for the M&Ms, I would uh, suspect there's some kind of manufacturing issue that needs to be addressed. In other cases, for example, if you're looking at genetics questions, you might conclude that uh, the combinations of offspring that you observe are not what you'd expect. And so there must be something else going on uh, with the process of reproduction to explain that outcome. Okay, well, I hope this was helpful for uh, seeing another example of how to calculate the chi-squared statistic and how to interpret uh, the resulting value that you get. And, um, you know, hopefully this will help you remember this and apply this to future questions as well.